We're taking inspiration from Pride Month, which is a fantastic global initiative taking place in June every year focused on the LGBTQ plus community. But we're going to be talking about diversity in a wider context with a spotlight on the environment sector. To gain some insight, we're talking to a number of chartered environmentalists about who they are and what they do, and we discuss their thoughts on diversity in the environment sector and beyond. Here's what one chartered environmentalist said. We're joined by Alistair Mosley, who's a chartered environmentalist via SIWEM, it's the Chartered Institute of Water and Environmental Management. Um, welcome, Alistair. Hello, nice to meet you, Phil. How are you doing today? Uh, very well, enjoying the sunshine. It's a bit warm in here, actually. It is a little bit warm. Desk fan is on, um, although hopefully That's you won't be able to hear it. But, um, so thank you very much for joining us today. Um, to start off with, could you just provide a bit of an introduction to yourself and what you do? Yeah, I'm um, a civil engineer by trade, but um, very much with an environmental orientation to what I do. I've worked in the industry for about 35 years. Um, I've worked very closely with uh, two professional institutions in my life. One of them is SIWIM, Chartered Institute of Water and Environmental Management, and then the Institute of Civil Engineers. Hmm. I'm very proud to have been the president of SIWIM in 2008 and 9, and that's a role that I'm very fond of because it was a very difficult time for the institution, and I saw through some big changes and I'm now an honorary vice president so an ambassador for the institution I'm a fellow of the Institute of Civil Engineers and a fellow of the institution uh, for, of Cyway which uh, okay I've done my bit yeah and in terms of your day-to-day -day job what do you do yeah, I run a small consultancy practice called H2O Web Limited. I've run that for about nine years. I provide strategic business support to uh, businesses working in the water and environmental sectors. Prior to that, I was a water sector director for WSP. And prior to that, I was a water, water environment director for uh, HIDA, HIDA Consulting, which of course is now Arcadis. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay. So, yep, down the, the consulting uh, route, well, I guess. And I, to, to complete the picture before that, I used to work with um, a consultancy owned by Seven Trent, which was called Haswell Consulting Engineers. So I've been in the water sector for um, at least 30 years of my 35. A couple of years. Actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. today we're, we're, we're talking about the topic of diversity, really. Um, so the environment sector has a, a huge amount of diversity in terms of the skills and disciplines across multiple sectors and how that impacts on the environment. Um, but from your experience, what are the key issues and opportunities around diversity at the moment? I guess the, the one key issue that surrounds diversity is promotion to senior grades. I think um, if you look at the sector and you look at the way uh, the professionals that are coming into it, uh, there are many, many uh, women and an ethnic great ethnic variety um, uh, amongst them. But when you actually look at the senior levels, they're still very heavily dom dominated by white males, I'm afraid that's, uh, that's still there. There are some notable exceptions though. Uh, I, th I have to mention uh, Seven Trent's CEO, which is Liv Garfield, um, who has uh, really sort of transformed that, that organization since she's been there. Uh, North, Northumbria Water Limited, Heidi Mottram has been there for many, many uh, years and done a fantastic job. And there are some other key senior positions who are um, beginning to emerge now for Thames Water and, uh, and also the chairman of Seven Trent. So it is possible. And, um, and if you look bro broadly across the, um, the water industry, it's getting better. And I think the Environment Agency is particularly good from what we can see as an institution in promoting women into senior roles. So is that something you think is changing over recent years or is it being extremely gradual? No, no, no. It's most definitely, it's something that I've seen sort of very obviously in the last sort of five, six years, I think. And of course, all those organisations have put in place great commitments to, to be more diverse. Just going back to the, um, the, the, um, the, ground, the grassroots, if you like, of people coming in there, I, I, I see, certainly from Cywim, I, I do see a good balance of, of, uh, of men, women and, and different, different, different ethnic backgrounds, which I find really encouraging. And they're coming in because of the great skills that they have. Um, so I'm quite privileged in the role I work in as a professional that I tend to see professionals around me all the time. So people that have come through the professional grades, if you like. Uh, I, am, I am a professional reviewer for SIWEM. And um, so I, I guess I'm privileged. But the, the point I'd like to try and make there is that when we're looking to bring professionals into our 
fraternity, if you like, we don't see colour, we don't see sexuality, we don't see ethnicity, we just see great people bringing, bringing the skills to the, the industry that we know will help us fulfil our objectives. And certainly that's, that's my passion, I believe that. It doesn't mean everybody does, but it's certainly something I'm seeing becoming the norm, if you like, and, and that's, that's how it has to continue. I guess that must be the best way forward, really, to, to, to not even have it as an agenda. That's the end goal, I guess, across you know, the environment sector and society as a whole, I suppose. Well, there are some key things that make life a lot easier. So as, um, as a reviewer for Cywin, we don't see the ethnicity, we don't see the age, and certainly at the reviewer stage, uh, when we're presented with the candidate, very often we'll have no idea who we're actually going to see. All we see is their qualifications and experience. So when they come into the room, into the space, if it's through Zoom, that's the first time we've seen them. We have no preconceived, no preconceptions. And that really helps because it means the interviews are very free flowing, uh, focusing on skill. And if, they are, if the candidate's articulate, then it's, uh, it really does not matter what their uh, background is at all. Absolutely. Um, and how has diversity or lack of diversity, I guess, impacted on your work? Um, I guess um, in, in my journey to where I've come to today, I've seen some pretty bad things in terms of, um, sort of women or, or even, even the black ethnic minorities being passed over. Um, I've never been a part of that personally. I've always been a great advocate and supporter to try and help people get through, uh, no matter what their background is, because, I, again, I believe in talent. I want, I want people to be talented. Um, but I, I'm seeing it's getting better now. I, I now tend to work as an independent consultant, so I, I tend to be brought in on a... Um, an advisory capacity and one of the best organizations I've seen recently for, for this is the Coal Authority, um, a fantastic organization sort of overseeing all the coal assets around the, all the old former coal mines. Uh, they're headed up by Lisa Pinney who is a very well respected professional uh, who sort of learned to craft the Environment Agency is now their CEO and they have some great female leaders and uh, an ethnic diverse mix across, the, across their, uh, their um, employment spectrum if you like and uh, organizations like that are really setting setting the trend in my opinion and, and need to be respected and uh, celebrated absolutely yeah um, and is there anything um, in particular you think that people should be so whether people are new to the environment sector or whether, whatever it might be is there anything you think they should be thinking about when thinking of diversity, I guess, and um, hmm. essentially going for okay. the goal of it not being a problem. Well, I would, I would encourage people to want to come into the sector for the vast range of careers that it offers. I think the environment sector is, is phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's often polarised around the water industry. <laughs> the water sector is vastly bigger than, um, than the water industry. And then if you then put the environment sector on top of that, it's absolutely huge. So the range of careers are massive in terms of uh, scientific uh, capability, technology, innovation. I, I would come in seeing those and being excited by those uh, rather than worrying that you're going to be, there's going to be some prejudice there. Because I think I'm seeing that there is a will to recruit talent and skill and ability and creativity. That's what I think most of my colleagues are looking for. We don't, we don't see the, the other blockers that are there. So look at this profession, uh, look at this career opportunity in the, in the environment sector and the water sector that I operate in um, from the, the vast range of the different uh, career opportunities that are there and, uh, and come and show us your talent and, and join us. Make a difference, I guess. Make it absolutely make a difference, yeah. And then you can inspire the next generation to, to do the same and um, hopefully the level of diversity will continue to increase and, uh, and so on. One of our key criteria, key criteria at SIWEM is uh, to see whether people are happy to mentor people and bring them through. So uh, even at the interview stage, we'll often ask, you know, are you, in, are you mentoring people? Are you bringing people on? And, uh, you know, it's a great thing to be proud of, to bring somebody in behind with you, you know. Mm. I can look back on some, there's some wonderful people out there that I've helped on the way to get to the careers they're in. And many of them have got further on than I have, but at least I can have a bit of pride in knowing that they, I helped them start that journey, you know, and uh, really, because that really excites me. And I, I hope that will be the same for most other people. Brilliant. There's a good message to end with. So, Absolutely. well, thank you very much for your time, Alistair. That's a um, really interesting insights and um, onwards and upwards in terms of increasing diversity and uh, hopefully those, um, whether they're female leaders or 
different types of uh, diverse people are, are making a difference and hopefully they can inspire other people to continue. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for uh, asking me to do this. No problem at all. If you wanted to hear more diversity insight from chartered environmentalists, you can either go to our YouTube channel where the other videos will be available or the links are below and you can click on whichever one you like.